Minecraft's history is plagued with a multitude of dark and powerful beings, and few are more well known than the terrifying Herobrine and Giant Alex. But have you heard of the war that erupted between these two monstrosities? This is the story of that monumental battle, Herobrine versus Giant Alex. Fog rolled through the thick woods, heavy and damp as if smothering the very air itself. The dense mist blocked the visibility of a small party of villagers huddling together terrified. A booming rumble shook the ground at their feet. The spontaneous quaking repeated in a distinct rhythm reminiscent of giant footsteps shaking the forest. The villagers fled into the trees, horrified by the growing footfalls behind them. A looming shadow could be seen amidst the fog drawing closer. Crashes and explosions echoed out as the unfortunate runaways were bombarded with falling dirt blocks. A single bolt of lightning fell from the sky onto the cluster of villagers, electrocuting one of them to death. Mortified, the others scampered away, afraid for their own lives after seeing such a gruesome end. Dashing and ducking through the woods, they eventually discovered a small cave. But when they tried to hide inside, a giant foot came down, ending the life of another villager with a sickening splat. The sole survivor cowered in fear before the hulking figure of Giant Alex. No, please don't kill me. I don't want to die. How dare you villagers enter my forest? What drives you to step foot in my realm in such large numbers? Giant Alex was used to dealing with intruders in her domain. In fact, she enjoyed hunting down the occasional builder or pillager who dared to approach. She experimented and expanded her powers on such easy prey. As of late, an alarming amount of villagers have started to invade her woods. Her curiosity overtaking her, she interrogated the one remaining villager on the subject. Sensing a way to avoid death, the survivor divulged their circumstances. Pillagers, in larger numbers than ever seen before, had started to attack villages. The builders set to guard the town soon became more and more overwhelmed by the waves of enemies. With the builders having to consolidate their forces, villagers in remote locations have had to resort to abandoning their homes to avoid the slaughter. Finishing his tale, the villager added that it was rumored Herobrine was amassing an army, and that he was behind the attacks. Alex's fury ignited at the news, the fog thickening and the air cracking with electricity as if in response. How dare Herobrine disturb her reign? With her feelings of former camaraderie to her friend long gone, only anger towards Herobrine's recent transgressions remained. Giant Alex decided it was time to deal with her former friend. To his surprise, Giant Alex spared the villager, but he faced a much worse fate, becoming a thrall bound to her will. Beneath the long shadow of an ancient builder's fortress, a horde of pillagers raged, smashing against the walls in a desperate attempt to get to the humans inside. Atop the walls and tower of the small fort, builders armed with bows and arrows fired down at the ravenous masses. The pillagers returned fire with their crossbows, but they soon dwindled in quantity. A few brave builders jumped up the walls and slew the rest of the assaulting force in close quarters combat. As the battle ended, they returned to the safety of their structures, eyeing the barren forest that the pillagers had emerged from. These pillagers are relentless! They've attacked pretty much every day now! We can't survive much more of this! In that instant, Herobrine appeared on the tower behind the two, his eyes glowing ominously. They tried to shout in alarm, but instead were quickly knocked off the tower, meeting a gruesome death below. Alerted by their screams, the rest of the builders looked up to behold Herobrine flying above the fortress. Without a single word, Herobrine spawned pillagers inside of the fort. The builders tried to fend them off, but caught unprepared, they became helpless victims to this ambush. Eventually, none were left alive. Herobrine surveyed the destruction from overhead. This was becoming a regular occurrence as he led his armies across the realm. He had hidden away, plotting for long enough. Now he was on the hunt for a new command block. He was sure that his old rival Steve was hiding it from him, he who so rightly deserved it. During his search, villagers and builders alike have felt Herobrine's wrath. At first, he would take prisoners, but as that proved fruitless, he began to leave none alive. Twisted by his time in this world, he no longer wanted to escape, but instead wanted to wipe the slate clean and start anew, make a world of his own design. Master, I'm here to report progress further south. The pillager informed his master that the raids on the villages had begun to take an unexpected turn. A heavy fog would roll in during the middle of the pillager's raids, 
Without the faintest idea what was happening, the pillagers would start to lose their forces left and right. Those who survived avoided the fog, and towns that were engulfed by it stayed that way. The news delivered by his minion aggravated Herobrine. He knew it was Giant Alex who was the culprit behind these attacks. How could he not? Herobrine himself was the one who gifted her those powers. All that time ago, she had refused to join his side, and now she dared to interfere with his plans. I'll show you the price of standing in my way, Alex. As night speckled the sky with starlight, a single builder was busy defending a quaint village. Much like every night, he was preoccupied with fighting off ravenous zombies that threatened his town. Despite the scheduled nature of the fight, the man still had to give it his all in order to survive. It wasn't until after the monsters were defeated that the builder was beseeched by nervous thoughts of pillager raids. Jumping at every noise already, the thick fog rolling in only further agitated his fried nerves. In the deadly silence of the night, a figure appeared behind the anxious builder. Snapping around in fear, the builder was relieved to find only a lone villager. Whoa! Who? You scared me! What is a villager like yourself doing out at this hour? Is something wrong? Responding with a silent, vacant stare, it became apparent something was off about this villager. Cracks of blood covered its skin, and its eyes were empty pits. The builder inquired about its strange condition, but the bloody villager suddenly lunged forward, attacking him. Like a puppet on a string, it swung its arms awkwardly at the builder. The bizarre move, accompanied by its unusual strength, forced the builder to finally draw his weapon and defend himself. Unfortunately, it was too little too late, as more bloody villagers emerged from the fog, surrounding the poor guardian of the town. His screams of terror echoed through the night, as he was surrounded by these ghastly offshoots of those he swore to protect. The bloody figures spread throughout the town, their arms uncrossed seemingly disregarding their oaths of pacifism. The villagers cowered away, terrified in their homes. As the morning sun broke above the horizon, its warmth was blocked by the persistent fog. Helpless villagers were then dragged out of their homes by their ghastly doppelgangers. The town's single iron golem did nothing to rescue them, seemingly mistaking the bloody villagers for those it was built to protect. As the villagers were forced to gather around the town's dismal well, the bloody troop's leader stepped through the fog. It was none other than Giant Alex, and as soon as she arrived, she began performing a twisted ritual. In a gruesome sight, the well began to overflow with blood. One by one, each villager was forced to drink from the well. Immediately, their skin began to crack and bleed, until every single villager had transformed into a bloody double of themselves. Now, they were a united force of blood villagers occupying the town, just as Alex had planned. The process to amass her forces was simple and efficient. She cursed villagers with a fraction of her own powers to put them under her control. She then spread that curse through the fog her armies marched with. Watching this horrible ritual from afar was none other than Steve. His face was twisted with discontent at the tragic sight. It was bad enough with Herobrine causing trouble, but now you're making your move too, Alex? Without waiting for a reply to the question he'd asked to no one, Steve departed from the village lost to the fog. He had to report this unfortunate new development to the rest of the builders. Things were only going to get worse from here on out. It wasn't long before all-out war broke out between the blood villagers controlled by Giant Alex and the pillagers following the commands of Herobrine. Skirmishes broke out all across the world as each of the armies tried to expand their territories. The powerful entities behind these armies gave their orders from the shadows, waiting to see if they could feel out their opponent's strength. Hordes of blood villagers would ambush pillager raids as they trekked over vast landscapes. The superior numbers crashing down on the pillagers often left behind a gruesome sight. It wasn't long before Herobrine discovered the source of these hordes. As a countermeasure, pillagers began to raid and capture villages before the Curse of the Fog could reach them. The villagers caught in the middle of two armies suffered the most, and the builders sworn to protect them could do little against armies on two fronts. The war developed into a game of strategies and counter-strategies between Alex and Herobrine. The blood villagers moved under cover of fog, so Herobrine cleared the leaves for his army to see. Alex was faced with the reality that despite superior numbers, her armies lacked the combat prowess to fend off the well-trained pillagers. Determined to remedy the issue, she underwent a grueling ritual to further strengthen her cursed blood villagers, granting some of them low-level telekinesis. No longer able to power through the armies standing against his own, Herobrine created tunnels for his forces to move underground. This even proved a viable way to ambush towns captured in the fog. Fine. If my minions can't take care of those pillagers, I'll do it myself! 
Alex became the first of the two leaders of this war to personally step into the fight. She stomped the pillagers herself, slaughtering them with ease. Blocks flew and lightning crashed as she inflicted her fury on the enemy. The pillagers could not withstand giant Alex and her power. Despite this, Herobrine employed clever counter-strategies, not wanting to face his old friend in combat just yet. Per his command, the pillagers started to bring creepers with them into battle. With their presence, Alex's lightning was turned back on her own forces, as supercharged creepers wrought destruction onto the battlefield. Alex knew she had to do something to escalate this war of attrition. She quickly gathered a small horde of blood villagers and personally marched towards Herobrine's mansion. The enemy base, surrounded by leafless trees, wasn't too hard to locate. Even as Alex surrounded the mansion with her fog, there was still no sign of her enemy. Furious at his refusal to face her, she controlled her thralls to flood into the mansion. She wanted them to destroy everything inside and force Herobrine out. She waited for a moment, scanning the manor for her target. Suddenly, the entrance to the mansion sealed shut as if it was never there. A distinct sound behind Alex informed her that Herobrine had teleported there. Turning to him ready for a fight, she was instead met with Herobrine's desire to talk. Herobrine argued that this current war they were having was pointless. He couldn't let her get in the way of his goals, but that didn't mean that he wanted to fight. He expounded that the builders were their actual enemies and insisted that Alex join him. Herobrine promised that if she helped him create a new world, he would let her join his side to experience it. Alex did not share his views on the matter, however. She insisted that the builders were not an issue for her. He was. She also dismissed his dreams of a new world as delusional. I'm not fighting you just to get in your way. I'm done watching your pathetic antics. It's time for my reign of terror without you in the way. You're a fool. Fine then. Our next battle shall be your last. Without another word, Herobrine vanished. Enraged by his declaration, Giant Alex destroyed the sealed entrance to the mansion, freeing her forces. Observing from afar was Steve, flanked by two generals, and fully equipped for war. As Herobrine and Alex had been battling it out, Steve had been gathering his forces for an all-out attack. But now, on the eve of battle, he was conflicted. Watching his former comrades become so bloodthirsty left him feeling hollow inside. The villagers they had sought to protect were a lost cause. With a heavy heart, he told his generals that they would not partake in the fight ahead. Despite gathering their forces for this very purpose, it was clear that it would only lead to more losses. Who knows? Maybe they will take care of one another for us. A light rain fell over the battlefield. Herobrine, floating above his army, had summoned the weather so that his army of monsters could fight even during the day. Pillagers stood side by side with spiders, zombies, skeletons, and creepers, all beneath the giant wall Herobrine had constructed. More pillagers were perched atop the structure, waiting with crossbows in hand. Across the barren field, giant Alex emerged from the foggy forest, leading her army of blood villagers. Dotted amongst her forces were the iron golems, still insistent on protecting their villagers, unaware that their minds were gone. The stillness shattered with a roar from Alex as her forces charged forward. The monsters beneath Herobrine responded in kind, with the two armies clashing in the middle like waves of water. Spiders gnashed their pincers and zombies moaned as blocks were launched through the air. Bloody villagers mindlessly pushed forward, animated to move past reasonable levels of damage. The iron golems swept the battlefield with ease as the pillagers on the wall rained down arrows at the same frequency as the water fell from the sky. Giant Alex stomped about the fight, crushing her enemies with every step. She brought down lightning and giant blocks, causing massive disturbances to her enemy's front line. The mobs and pillagers crashed against her giant form, as fruitlessly as her own forces crashed against the battlefield walls. Herobrine in turn teleported around the battlefield at dizzying speeds. In a flash, he would appear behind the enemy, kill them with a single hit before teleporting away. The battle drew on until the sun began to set. Both sides were left devastated, with few numbers remaining, the exception being the pillagers on the walls. In a desperate act, Alex brought down an array of lightning bolts to strike the wall, finally breaching it. The bloody villagers, tied to her will, flooded through the resulting hole, leaving giant Alex and Herobrine alone. Without words, they began to clash. Alex did everything she could to attack her nemesis, throwing giant fists and kicks and launching blocks through the air. But nothing worked as he just teleported around her, throwing insults and jeers as he did. Even her powerful lightning seemed to have no effect when striking Herobrine. Enough of 
these games! Fight me for real! You wanna see me fight for real? Fine! Hero Brian lifted himself into the sky, his eyes aglow with a furious white light. Giant Alex faced him head on, as they both charged for a monumental clash that shook the earth. Once the dust settled and the smoke cleared, only the titanic visage of Giant Alex remained on the battlefield. It seemed as though the victor was decided.